LegalizeFreedom.com Why are we here? Where do we come from? Where are we going? From the nature of reality to the future of humanity. Listen without limits. Unchain your brain. Change your thinking. Change your life. LegalizeFreedom.com Greetings and welcome once again to LegalizeFreedom.com. I'm your host Greg Moffat and my guest today is Bjorn Andreas Bull Hansen, who joins us to discuss changing attitudes towards masculinity in the 21st century. Toxic masculinity has become one of the most used and abused cultural labels of our time. Although generally defined as the constellation of socially regressive masculine traits that serve to foster domination, the devaluation of women, homophobia and wanton violence, in the minds of many it has come to be synonymous with any traditional male role model in family and society and even with masculinity itself. Clearly, Traits such as low empathy, excessive aggression, lack of emotion and sexism are destructive, but they are not inherent to any reasonable definition of masculinity. But this is just one of the challenges facing men, and particularly young men, in these tumultuous times. Changes within the structures of society have left many men adrift and confused about their own lives. Add to all this misplaced political correctness, disempowering cultures of blame and dependency, and unrealistic role models in popular culture, and you get a generation of depressed, disillusioned men lacking ambition, passion, drive, and direction. For men of any age, however, it is still possible to overcome these limitations and live meaningful, purposeful, and fulfilling lives. Hello and welcome, Bjorn, and thank you so much for joining us again today on LegalizeFreedom.com. Well, thank you for having me. Today, Bjorn, we're going to talk a little bit about um, changing aspects of, you know, manhood and the role of, of men in the early 21st century. Uh, before we dive into our chat, just give listeners a little pot of bio. Tell them about your, your work. Well, um, I'm a novelist and um, I have been a novelist for a long time. Uh, I'm 48 years uh, now and... Uh, yeah, well, what can I say? Yeah, I'm a YouTuber as well, um, and um, I'm a family man. <laughs> I live in Norway. I'm trying to live a normal life in these crazy times. Uh, during our first interview, which listeners can find linked up on this interview page, uh, we were talking about, uh, well, the crazy times you just mentioned, you know, the sort of crisis of culture uh, in the early 21st century. And we touched upon changing male roles in society then and this is something i want to talk a bit uh in more depth today now i'm a couple of years older than you but that makes us the same generation um and certainly in my lifetime i've seen changing ideas of what it is to be a man you know what manhood means ma- men's role and we're not just talking heterosexual here though that is particularly rel- relevant but it seems that this, for, for quite some time now, that has been a- a- entering a sort of a crisis phase, you know, and in terms of purpose and identity that, that many men have found, have been confronted with, with very difficult, um, changes in what's expected of them and what they're able to do. And certainly for young men, this is a, a huge problem when they're trying to establish themselves. So I use the word crisis advisedly because that's certainly what it feels like, uh, has done at least for at least the last decade. Yeah. Well, I get a lot of uh, messages um, on my uh, comments and also messages, uh, comments on my videos and messages sent to me from my, especially my YouTube subscribers and viewers. Uh, Many of them are men, many of those men are young men. And uh, it is, as you say, people, well, men, especially men, I would say, are uh confused 
and um, they struggled finding their place and their uh, mission uh, in life, I would say, uh, because uh, manhood has been given a bad name, uh, and it's been going on for a long time, and everyone who hasn't been living under a rock knows about this, and 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 it's you know uh, masculinity has has become this negative destructive force uh, th that's how it's portrayed which is extremely I would say dangerous because you take away a key element of what it is to be a man or, or the key element the most important element obviously of being a man and you're telling young men well actually boys um, that uh, well everything that you are it's bad so we should not be um, surprised when we see that young men especially young men struggle finding uh, they struggle in life they struggle to find out who they are and they they many of many young men now are not really men because they never they never grew up they are still boys you know so they, they might be 30 years old but they are still boys which is not a good situation for them and we have seen a lot of societal changes generally um which have contributed to this you know the idea of the nuclear family uh you know mom dad kids has kind of been atrophied and, and eroded over the decades it's now very common uh for people uh, of not just young people actually but pe people of all generations to live on their own you know single households uh, single per single parent families are more common i was only age seven when my father was out of the picture so after that i looked to my grandfather you know so i understand some of the issues here people are less likely to get married now um less likely to commit to something long term so these have all definitely these wider changes in society have contributed to this a situation as well yeah well uh i'm not married <laughs> but um i've i've been in the same relationship for a very long time and um so so that's that's uh <laughs> That's, I, I get a little bit, not upset, but uh, a little bit frustrated when, when I think especially people in, in North America, they, they, uh, they don't understand that you can actually have a, a lifelong relationship, uh, uh, without being married. But, but anyway, uh, that's not the point here. Um, the, the nuclear family, I don't like that term, but it's, you know, the family. Um, it is not only do we know that it makes people feel more fulfilled and uh, and healthier, and I've seen uh, these uh, polls and so on, and they 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 indicate that people are happier when they live as part of you know a small family. Um, I know there are other you know polls and so on that that say that well single people are are the happiest but that's 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 just rubbish it's rubbish statistics so uh but anyway the, the nuclear family this small unit you know it's a it's a it's something that seems to be a factor that gives a society uh wealth uh and success and prosperity um if we go back in history and we look at you know societies where people did not live in these family units uh, those societies tend to be more brute uh, less humane and not as successful long term so there are exceptions but not many of them so we need to realize that you know when we go away, when we move away from the nuclear family uh, as a key element in our society, we, it's very destructive and it's not going to make people happier. On the contrary, I would say. We, we touch upon this phrase, which we haven't used yet. You've mentioned masculinity, but of course, all over the, 
the media these days, the buzzword is toxic masculinity. And of course, there are there are problems with human behavior across the board, male and female and anything else you want to put in between that. There is there's right and wrong. You know, I'm not uh, a moral relativist. I accept that we can we inherently know right and wrong, I think, when we see it or we should anyway. Yeah, we can certainly learn to as as we go through life. But the, the toxic masculinity thing Im- implies what you've already basically stated, that there's some kind of inherent problem with anything, any traditional male role. Anything you might think of that you're, you, know, you and I and people listening to this as well, anything that you're, you might associate with your father, your grandfather, previous generations, things that they did. And some ideas are outmoded. Society develops and not all traditions are necessarily worth holding on to. But equally, they're, to, to jettison everything, because well, this again comes into identity politics. To sort of to call anything what it is, and for anything to accept that something, uh, a situation you don't like, just is what it is. It's, again, has become a tremendous problem, and that's where toxic masculinity. If you stick that into your favorite search engine, you'll return millions of results. Yeah, well, uh, of course, um, any trait can be toxic. Uh, so you have toxic femininity, uh, toxic masculinity, and so on. Um, it's just a phrase that we can use, but it's not very intelligent to do that, I think, because it doesn't really say anything. It's it's just a, a, a uh, well, uh, uh, I think you said buzzword. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's not... It's it's just a word that gets thrown around a lot, and and the problem, of course, as we know, is that it implies that not only do such a thing as toxic a toxic version of masculinity exist, but masculinity is toxic. That's what it implies, and that's the problem, you know, and and. It hurts people when you take away masculinity and you say to boys, you know, well, you shouldn't behave in such a way. You shouldn't, you shouldn't behave like a boy because that's not nice. And, uh, I'm not, I'm not one of those people who are going to say that, well, boys need to beat each other up and they need to be, learn to be tough and boys shouldn't cry. I'm not going to say that because I think that's not Right, that's that's nonsense. Um, and as you said, we need to move away from you know uh, some some perceptions are outdated, and and that's a good thing. But uh, myself, I, I I cry easily, you know. That's <laughs> but I'm not. I've never been. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm quite confident in my masculinity. I would say so. Um, those two things doesn't really. Um, uh, you can be sensitive. That's what, what I'm trying to say, and still masculine. So we need to understand masculinity better. We need to have a uh, wider perspective of what masculinity is, because there are now moving. I'm moving into the you know the the I'm I'm going to be the devil's advocate here for a few seconds. <laughs> um, I don't like when people say they call out, you know, everyone who doesn't fit into a uh, 19, 1950s picture of the masculine man, and they 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 point at everyone outside of that frame, and they say, well, they are not men. That's very silly, and and those people should stop doing that, you know. Um, and it that kind of attitude it, it kind of strengthens this this narrative with you know that says that masculinity is toxic yeah well this is against the background of of uh polarization really in debate and dis- uh, discussion well you, do we well, quite often these days we don't have debate and discussion we just have arguments you know shouting yeah. shouting matches but uh, where everything's black and white it has to be one thing or the other. There's a lack of nuance, a lack of subtlety, and a lack of balance. And that's really what we're looking at here. Uh, but no, something has to be all one thing or all the other. It has to be 
left wing or right wing. It can't be anything else. If you see what I mean. So that's kind of the the landscape of like cultural discussion that we're we're working with, and it makes it very difficult to to, to really discuss anything properly or to you know to find a way forward. You know, you have to be it's not like all or nothing with with every issue. Yeah, it's. And it's it's this attitude also that if you're not with us, you're against us. <laughs> it, it's it, there's a lot of that. And um, I'm I if I was asked, are you right wing or left wing? I would say I'm a moderate. I, I'm I'm quite because I'm quite moderate in many when it comes to many things. Um, but that has become, you know, unacceptable. <laughs> Because there's this thing that, um, uh, yeah, as you said, it, it's very polarized, and and you need to be either uh, totally against something or totally for something, uh, which is a big problem, you know. Um, and we see this. Uh, I think it's, I think it's a sign of immaturity. It's. It's I don't know maybe it's the schools that are to blame. Um, when I was at school, you know, and I'm sure you can remember this as well, uh, we were encouraged to discuss and to to share ideas and to have respect for other people's views on on, on different subjects. And um, I hope they're still doing that, but um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, mainstream media is to blame as well. They are extremely polarized, and they they are, you know, if they see something that that gives them uh, clicks, they will pick up that ball and run with it. You know that that's what they're doing. So yeah, um, that's a different discussion altogether, I guess. Yeah, but it is it is important because one other issue with whether it's your single parent households, um, absent fathers. Uh, failing to take responsibility that a lot of boys transition into a form of manhood with, without a role model. Uh, so this, this media, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, dramatized fictional versions of, of the role models they see in, in TV movies or whether it's coming to them from, you know, the news media. So yeah, that has got a huge, a huge, uh, role to play in all of this. And I don't watch much television. I, I don't imagine that you do either. But in your lifetime, you've probably been aware of, I don't know what you call it in Norway, the, 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 uh, the soap opera or the sitcom situation yeah. comedy on, t- on TV. And also in advertising, when it ad- advertising shows a family situation, you have the expression is doofus dads. Yes. You see this a lot. You have these useless, spineless, stupid, idiotic, big kids. In the, in the male role. And, you know, that's, that's something that may not play a huge role in any of this, but it's one thing that is a real personal bugbear of mine. Even if you just come on to advertise for like soap powder or something, and you'll see this dad fumbling around in the kitchen and dropping things, and he's incapable of doing anything, and, and mum has to step in and take over, and that's fine. Who wouldn't want strong women? But it's, it just really, really irritates me. Yeah, well, it's a symptom uh, of something much more serious that's going on you know and it's um it's it's like can you imagine um one of these uh, sitcoms if they made a new sitcom with a really intelligent strong um dominant even uh father um if you're a good writer you can you can make that work and make it funny and everything you know but can you imagine them doing that? It, they would never do that because that would be. Uh, and, and what if what if the mother was a bit, you know, a bit stupid? Um, I'm just reversing the role, sir. Uh, you know, because the father now, as you say, he's a bit stupid. He's a bit weak, uh, and the the mother is, you know, the, the boss. And and and, but it, it, that would never happen now because it would be outrage. Uh, <laughs> so, so it's a symptom of something that is going on uh, that is not good, you know. And I, I think popular culture is it, it's the 
not only the canary in the, in the coal mine, but, but it also it's uh, they are popular culture is is telling us what's going on in in the people's heads because people might say, well, I don't watch that and I don't care and so on, but well, the numbers don't lie, you know, and and some of these shows and especially reality series that's that's uh, again something different but you know um they 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 are lots of people are watching those and um uh, yeah so yeah and by the way those reality tv shows now i have to be a little careful because i don't watch those at all i i've i have refused to watch those but i've seen the ads um with young people and they all look the same you know and that's a different version of the male role and the female role uh, and it's sickening it's even worse uh, if you ask me and all the girls they are pumped up with silicon and all the boys they are apparently on steroids and uh, uh, and they're all you know tanned and full of tattoos and all that it's it's this same I, i'm not i'm not criticizing people who are tanned and have tattoos but my point is that <laughs> they're all the same you know and they are expected to behave in a very immature way and if you look at this some of these people they are adults they are young adults but they should behave uh better they should behave in a much more mature way i did when i was at that age and younger um and but that that's that's not interesting to popular uh media you know that's that's not what they want that's not what they want to celebrate yeah you're probably thinking of series again i've never watched these things but i've seen the ads it's something there's a thing called love island you know where it's kind of like uh, sticking boys and girls together, <clears throat> ostensibly men and women, but boys and girls together and, oh, what's going to happen? You know, who's going to, yes. who's going to cop off with who sort of thing? And they, they do all look the same, more or less. A lot of these guys, uh, have obviously been hitting the gym, but they're not strong. They're just, no, 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 that's, it's just for show, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. they've got, they've got legs like pipe cleaners, you know. It's, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think that's what you're talking about there. One of the main things that is an issue in all of this is taking responsibility uh, for yourself, uh, for those, uh, for your life, um, and for you know those around you that you, you care about, uh, family, friends. Just generally taking responsibility, and this is something I think that has really, really eroded very much uh, in my lifetime. And of course, we're generalizing quite a bit here, but we're not applying this to everybody. But there are trends that you can see for sure. Now, there are economic reasons why some young men, even reaching into, into their 30s, you know, might be living with their, their parents. You know, there they're, they're, are tough times, especially in the last year or so. However, there is definitely a marked trend t uh, towards a failure to take responsibility, failure to launch uh, syndrome is, you know, more or less what it's called. And um, this, again, is something that's coming from culture and it has to be coming from parenting to a degree as well. Uh, and that has a huge effect um, on the direction of your life. If you feel you can't take responsibility or if you won't, you know, if you've been told that uh, that you can't. And, and we, we do get a lot of messages coming to us from the wider culture and the media, which are very disempowering when it comes to, uh, you know, men taking responsibility for the direction of their lives. Yeah, but it's shouldn't be a surprise to anyone because um being a man is very much about taking responsibility and you know making our fortune and, and all that so when that has been discouraged what's the word um discouraged um since since early childhood um it's 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 not not so strange that young men they 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 don't know what to do and but they they know that they they want they don't want responsibility you know so and and it's it's such a tragedy because that's what you 
that's what you need to grasp you know that's what you need to 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 stretch for that that responsibility makes the man so it's and of course you know jordan peterson he's talking about this um responsibility is is much more important to anyone anyone both men and and women than happiness um because people who if the, if your goal in life is to be happy you won't be happy uh but if you if you if you want responsibility and if you want to you know do something meaningful you will probably find happiness through that and that's that's a big tragedy that people don't understand that and they have been also discouraged from taking that responsibility so yeah well you, you read my mind in a way there because you mentioned jordan peterson and mm. i almost mentioned him in the, my last sentence but um i didn't because i thought oh yeah some people will hear his name and switch off uh, because you know he comes in for so much flack and a lot of people have criticized and i'm no I have read some of Peterson's stuff, you know, listened to some talks, but I'm, you know, I'm not a big advocate or anything, you know, whatever the guy's doing, what he's doing, I agree with him on some things. But he's been criticized, particularly with his books, of just packaging up common sense. And uh, people are going, well, yeah, we know, you know, Jordan Peterson says we should do, well, we know that. But <laughs> the reason he, I'm sure, feels the need to do what he's doing is because uh, common sense is no longer common. Exactly. So there, and a lot of people get irritated reading him, listening to him, because he's saying things that people basically, I think, in their heart of hearts, they often know to be true, and the truth hurts sometimes, especially when you're not living responsibly or living up to uh, your ideals or living your truth. To have to be reminded of that can be very uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, I, I do that a lot. Uh, in my videos, in my videos, I I like to you know just share some common sense, and I find that extremely meaningful, and my viewers find that extremely be, uh, meaningful as well. Uh, as you as you just said, uh, common sense isn't that common, but it's all it's also these universal truths and and we need to keep reminding people about them because they might be universal and they might be as old as i don't know very old <laughs> but it's we're not guaranteed that they will stay with us you know um so that's why we need to keep reminding people about Things that might be common sense. And these, you know, common sense is, uh, what I'm trying to say is this need and this, the importance of reminding people of common sense. That's one of the reasons why we have myths and fairy tales. Because they normally have a morale, you know, a, 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 a meaning to them. Um, and uh, they are, they have been told like a million times, you know, millions of times, because it's meaningful for people to be reminded of these things. So we have, we need to, we can't stop reminding people about common sense. Another important dimension of our culture, um, which has been increasing. Um, particularly in the early 21st century, is blame culture. It's somebody else's fault. Yeah, and this, exactly. of course, factors into not taking responsibility. So if you constantly look to others for direction and for to provide, like, well, you know, what, what am I getting? You know, what are you going to give me? Where, you know, where can I get stuff? Where do, who's going to give me money? Who's going to tell me what to do? Um, things are going to go wrong. And, Absolutely. and then, of course, uh, the temptation with blame culture is it's somebody else's fault. Who's going to compensate me? You know, what, what are you going to do? Uh, because this person has done this thing to me. What are you going to do? Because this thing that I wanted didn't work out. 
That concludes part one of our interview. Part two will be available soon in the subscribers area at legalizefreedom.com. Legalizefreedom.com.